Hello, people of Williamsburg, and welcome to Tribe Choices at the Movies 2016 Oscar Recap. I am your host, Alex Bolova. This past Sunday was the 88th Academy Awards, the most prestigious awards ceremony in all of Hollywood. Now, if you're like me, you threw a giant Oscar party to celebrate, inviting all your friends and family over so you could compete to see who got the most predictions correct. I got 15 out of 24. Not my best year. However, not many people are like me, and so you probably watch about 20 minutes of the Oscars and then turn it off to do homework. But have no fear. I'm here to recap all the moments that made this year's ceremony one for the history books. So let's begin. Let's start a recap by talking about the host of this year's ceremony, Chris Rock. The elephant in the room of this ceremony was the Oscar So White controversy, which commented upon the lack of diversity in this year's Oscar nominees. And Chris Rock not only acknowledged the elephant, he brought it on stage for everybody to look at for the entire ceremony. Almost every joke Chris Rock made was about race and discrimination in Hollywood. And you know what? It was really funny! I mean, not every single joke worked, but for the most part, it was one of the most solid ceremonies we've had in years. Highlights include comparing Hollywood racism to sorority racism, as well as segments that incorporate African-American actors into scenes from Oscar-nominated films, the funniest being The Revenant. However, the ceremony wasn't entirely political. Chris Rock used his hosting gig in order to raise money for his daughter's Girl Scout troop, raising a whopping $65,000. Overall, Chris Rock did a terrific job balancing politics and jokes making for one of the most entertaining ceremonies of the past couple of years. Sorry, Neil Patrick Harris. There are many memorable moments from this year's Oscar ceremony. Lady Gaga gave an incredibly moving performance of her song, Till It Happens To You, which ended with dozens of sexual assault victims coming on stage and taking hands in solidarity. Gotta say, it was probably the most powerful moment of the entire evening. The In Memoriam section was also particularly somber, especially with the recent passing of David Bowie and Alan Rickman. But on a lighter note, C-3PO, R2-D2, and BB-8 all came on stage to celebrate John Williams' 50th Oscar nomination. And you know what? It was really adorable. Winning an Oscar in any category is a big deal. However, there are some categories that go overlooked occasionally because Let's be honest, a lot of us don't spend our free time watching short documentaries. But these filmmakers deserve recognition for their effort. And fortunately, the Oscars recognize them. Best Animated Short Film went to Bear Story. Best Live Action Short Film went to Stutterer. And Best Documentary Short went to A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness. I'm just going to make this easy for you. Mad Max won pretty much all of them. It swept the technical category of winning, editing, costumes, makeup and hairstyling, sound design, sound mixing, and production design. Ultimately, it won the most Oscars of any film at this year's ceremony, bringing in six overall. The only technical award it didn't win was surprisingly special effects, which instead went to the much smaller but equally impressive Ex Machina. Though Lady Gaga's performance of Till It Happens To You brought literally the entire audience to its feet, it, it didn't win Best Original Song. Instead, Writings on the Wall won by Sam Smith. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't like that song. It, it's one of the worst Bond songs I've heard, and trust me, I am a connoisseur of Bond songs. But you know what? Good for Sam Smith. Also in the music category was Best Original Score, which went to Ennio Morricone for The Hateful Eight. If that name doesn't ring a bell, it's the guy who wrote the score for The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Otherwise known as wah 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 wah. This is more of a memorial Oscar than anything else, but you know what? This guy is a legend in the scoring community. He deserves it. I'm glad he got it. Best Adapted Screenplay went to The Big Short. Now this might have been the most deserving Oscar of the entire ceremony because somehow it managed to explain subprime mortgages to a film major. Best Original Screenplay went to Spotlight, which tells the story of the Boston Globe's investigation into the Catholic priest molestation scandal in Boston in the early 2000s. Best Supporting Actress went to Alicia Vikander for The Danish Girl, while Best Supporting Actor went to Mark Rylance for Bridge of Spies. These were the only Oscars that either of those films won. Best Documentary went to Amy, which documents the life of Amy Winehouse. Best Animated Film went to Inside Out, which is Pixar's comeback after the disappointments of Cars 2 and Monsters University. Best Foreign Film went to Son of Saul, a Hungarian Holocaust drama which won the Grand Prix at the Cannes Film Festival last year. Best Cinematography went to Emmanuel Lubetsky for The Revenant, making this the third consecutive year he has won Best Cinematography. The other two years include Gravity and Birdman. Best Director went to Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu for The Revenant. This marks the third time in Oscar history that a director has won Best Director consecutively. And finally, Brie Larson won Best Actress for Room, where she portrayed a mother who was kidnapped and had to raise her child in total isolation. Side note, 
Her co-star, Jacob Tremblay, was absolutely adorable during the ceremony. The most anticipated award of this year was Best Actor for one reason, Leonardo DiCaprio. Did he finally win his Oscar? Or did the Academy once again deny him the recognition he truly deserves? <clears throat> and the answer is... Yes, he won! Woo! Go, Leo! Yes! Internet wins! Yeah! But the real question is, did he deserve it? In short, no. Not for this performance. We all know that Leo suffered immensely for his role in The Revenant, and it's evident when you watch the movie. He does a great job suffering on camera. However, my issue is that literally any other actor could have given the performance that Leo did in this film. The only thing that Leo actually brings to the movie is the charisma that comes with him being a movie star. Because of that charisma, the audience likes his character Hugh Glass and therefore emphasizes with him throughout the film. However, that empathy does not a good performance make. Really, the only thing that Leo specifically brings to the role is just his likability. And that's not really acting, that's just him being him. I'm not saying this is a bad performance, and there isn't another performance from this year that I would have given the Oscar to. But the only thing that really makes this performance stand out is that it's being done by Leo. That being said, I'm glad he won! It's the end of an era, guys. I'm, I'm a little sad, but you know what? Good job, Leo. And now it's time for Best Picture. This year's Best Picture race was far more intense than any year that I can remember, solely because there wasn't really a frontrunner. It revolved around three different films, The Revenant, which won the Golden Globe and the BAFTA for Best Film, The Big Short, which won the Producers Guild Award, and Spotlight, which won the Critics' Choice Award. But in the end, Best Picture went to, drum roll please, Spotlight! Now, if you remember from earlier in the recap, Spotlight only won one other Oscar, which was for Best Original Screenplay. This makes this the first time in 63 years that Best Picture has only won two Oscars. But hey, I'm not complaining. Spotlight was by far the best film of 2015. And after Birdman last year, I'm really happy to see the Oscars actually recognize a deserving film. Thank you for joining me for this year's Oscar recap, and I'll see you guys soon. Carol should have been nominated for a lot more, and should have won a lot more, and I'm very upset. Please see Carol. It's a great film. Thank you.